Okay, back out in the shop again. Um, to go into a little more depth on a previous subject mentioned in some of the earlier videos, this is the C body recall wire harness. Um, I kind of showed it a little bit in one of the videos. I've since been able to acquire one. I didn't. I haven't seen one of these in a long time, but uh, this is it. Um, talked a little bit about how it was routed. Basically, it was designed to uh, parallel the charge output lead on early 70s uh, C bodies prior to the C body moving into a shunted ammeter design. Uh, the Packard terminal on the charge path was constantly burning up due to um, higher than normal levels of keyed accessories, uh, power windows, power locks, air conditioning, things that um, most of the C-bodies had, had standard that the other platforms did not necessarily have. Um, talked a little bit about the clutch rod holes that were punched in the firewalls of pretty much all platforms back then. This is the C-body one. It's a little bit different shape than the E and the B-body. But it's unique to the C-body. A little bit longer. A plastic plug with a rubber grommet. Um, pretty much made up of about an 8-foot section of uh, 10 gauge here for this segment. This appears to be 12 gauge. And it splits off into two female Packard connections that connected to the fuse panel. I'll show you that in a second over at the fixture. There's another power takeoff off of this. I don't remember what we did with those. I don't remember doing anything with them and I don't recall what it's for, but it's there. It could be a power takeoff. Uh, fusible link. Um, that is a 16 gauge fusible link. Um, ring terminal for the alternator output, designed to go right over the top of the existing one. Uh, this is the harness. Um, it's you know, funny, they're, they're available on eBay. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in years, but they're, they're, they're out there, a few bucks. I think I paid $15 for this guy. Uh, we'll go over to the We'll dig the fixture out and go over and show it to you here, how it works and what it's supposed to do. Okay, we're back at the fixture. Um, to uh, demonstrate how the C-body recall was supposed to work. Um, this is, as a review, this is the unfused power distribution wiring from a typical Chrysler product from the 60s and 70s um, that did not run a shunted ammeter, a standard ammeter configuration, E bodies, B bodies, A bodies through, and also C bodies through early 70s before they went to a shunted ammeter. Um, battery is here, typical starter relay. A battery feed from the battery comes usually from the starter relay. Uh, some configurations had the uh, starter relay mounted at the firewall close to the bulkhead connector where the fusible link went directly to the bulkhead connector and there was a wire run back out to the starter relay. But uh, it's the same concept. The B's and E's were kind of like this, later B's and E's anyway. Alternator feed, or back to our alternator again. Alternator standard is this um, Astron power supply over here. We're going to bring some power to the system um, and take some current measurements, see where the current is flowing. Um, again, this is our carbon pile battery tester. We're gonna use that as our variable loads. For this demonstration, I'm gonna place it on the windshield wiper power supply, which is keyed. It runs through the ignition switch, the ignition Powering up the power supply will uh, simulate engine running. Power supply is over here. We're seeing, looks like maybe four or five amps of current. Ammeter in the dash is also showing a charge current. 
The battery we're using today is known bad. It's got a bad cell in it or something. It doesn't want to hold a charge. And it draws some current. And it'll sit here and draw five amps of current indefinitely. And there's a reason it's sitting on the bench. I don't feel like pulling a good battery out of a car here for this particular demonstration because the battery really has nothing to do with what we're going to show you. Um, engine running. A little bit of what you, what you see in the factory ammeter should be any kind of battery charging. With a normal healthy battery, after a minute or two, the battery gets back to a full state of charge. You should see very little charge indication. The needle should be centered. Sometimes you can see just a little bit of charging. Let's turn on the ignition system. Dial in some loads. Watching over here, we're seeing our five amps going to the battery over there right now. Let's bring in about 20-ish. And let's bring it up to 20 on that ammeter that's on the power supply. This guy's not real precise. You'll notice the ammeter is still showing our four or five amps of uh, charging current to the battery. Our total alternator output at the moment is um, uh, 22 point whatever and a half amps. That's charging plus the load that we're placing here on the ignition system. Dial in a little bit more just to... There's 26 amps total. Some going to the battery, some being consumed through the battery load tester. If we come over to the ignition switch wires, we can see 22. Uh, we can't really see it on your end. We'll put it over here so you can see it. That's 18 amps or so. What do we got here? Yeah, that same 18 amps. Um, but more importantly, what we're what concerned with is the current going through this Packard connection at the bulkhead. If you watched any of the other videos where we put a little more load on this system, we actually had heat and smoke going on here. And the wire is warming up even at this current level. So the C-body uh, recall wire was designed to parallel this run from the alternator output stud to the battery bus at the fuse box, which is essentially connected to splice one. So th theoretically, it's a splice one to alternator output a parallel run. And it should reduce the current on the stock factory uh, Packard connection for that circuit. Let's stick it on here and take some measurements. Okay, we're back. Um, the C body recall installed. Ring terminal laid over the original charge path ring terminal out at the alternator output stud. Wire was meant to route down the valve cover towards the clutch pedal rod hole in the firewall and from there it went to the fuse box. At the fuse box um, we connected to an available spade that was on the back of the fuse box on the battery bus and it splits out and connects to another spade on the front of it. And that was the design. Snap it back together again. Let's turn our loads back on. What we got? I'm gonna dial in a little bit more so I can see some comparison. Okay, we're back to 20, 25 ish. Um, let's see where the current is flowing. Now let's just verify first what we got total current. Dial in about 20 amps. That's 20 amps on the load. 24 amps. 
about 18 for our load currently. Our battery is pulling about four amps, so 22 amps maybe. 12 amps through the bypass. And then another 11 amps through the original path now. So now we've dropped 24 amp-ish hours, excuse me. <laughs> so now we've reduced our current across the original charge path. 13, another 12 through the bypass. Our connection here at the Packard has cooled off significantly. Um, that's how this bypass was supposed to work. Retain stock uh, circuit protection as opposed to our so-called shunt wire bypass that we were kind of looking at some of the other videos where it bypasses the protection of the fusible link. Um, makes the system, or rather retains the system safety as it was designed. Um, and it doesn't screw with the ammeter performance. The ammeter still registers charging current, battery charging current only. It kind of covers the C body. Um, it's a better alternative to any of these shunt wire um, ideas that are kicking around out there. Pretty easy to do on most cars. Most of the most of the platforms are running that same fuse panel. Even the older styles where it wasn't running this particular fuse panel, they still had an extra a spade on this bus back here. Um, real quick to install. Mm. We used to do them in about maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you know, start to finish. Back in the day, that is. A better option.